And it was probably about this, this time that my grandfathers were, great grandfathers were, were meeting, meeting with Shivington and Evans and others who were in charge and talking. And, you know, we're doing the same thing right here, you know, and I hope it don't turn out uh, the way it did back in 1864. But I know the uh, chiefs back then were, were searching for peace, wanted peace. Black Kettle was a peace chief and, and actually went and surrendered at Fort Lyon, south of here. He surrendered, surrendered arms and uh, received the U.S. flag. And, and raised it at the camp, but they still still were attacked. All oh, the discussions, meetings the summer before, the surrender, the U.S. flag. So here today, this evening, this afternoon, I'm meeting with Methodists just as our chiefs did back then. And, uh, I wish they were here. I wish the survivors were here. I wish the, the, my grandfathers that heard the survivors were here to tell you, tell you the story. Um, I first heard the story about eight or nine years old, too. And I heard it and during the bad time while well, reservation, if any of you know reservations, uh, they're, they're uh, poverty stricken. Um, but I heard the story from my grandfather who heard it from my great-grandfather, his father, directly. My great-grandfather, his name was uh, Braided Hair, stood to Nuwisa. And he survived, survived the massacre, along with his wife. I heard the story at a real young age, and I too thought that. I, I, I just, I don't think I sat all the way through, through the stories. I think when it got to the point where uh, where my grandfather talked about what happened to the children and the woman. I think I just left. I remember walking away. And I don't know how long uh, it, I don't know, I felt like somebody started choking me and it, but felt like I couldn't breathe. But I remember thinking, why? Why? And, and for, the, for the longest time, and up until a couple of years ago, you know, maybe just recently, I finally just let it go. You know, I can understand how um, how anybody could do do that to to people.
But I remember being very angry and mad. And I heard about what happened to my, my uh, grandfathers. <clears throat> but I'm here because uh, my great-grandfather braided hair heard uh, horses and guns and he ran out of his teepee and grabbed a lariat, threw it out, and uh, uh, when the herd was running by, happened to catch a horse. And he pulled it in, and he threw my uh, grandmother, great-grandmother, on the horse, and, and the horse rode off back into the herd, and, and uh, she happened to be pregnant at that time with uh, their first child. Uh, and he, he managed to, to get away somehow. But, you know, if things turned out any other way, I probably wouldn't be here.